This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So welcome. This is the first of our two sessions. Um, I'm going to be talking about WordPress plugins for lead generation. Hands up everybody here who uses your website for generating leads of any kind. Volunteers, customers. Okay, so about half the class. Um, what does the rest of the audience use your WordPress site for at all? Um, is it more just for a blog? Is it more you're not interacting with people um, on your site? Because there's also uses for these plugins that are not just for lead generation. So that's why I want to get a sense. Because you can use it for a couple of different purposes. So the main purpose of this talk is if you're ready to start capturing leads but you're not ready to invest in full marketing automation software, there is a time and a place for migrating to the Marketos or the HubSpots of the world and no full suite of plugins that we have right now is going to get you to the point where you will never need Marketo. It, you can't replace Marketo out of plugins, but you can start to test the waters of building a little bit of marketing automation and lead generation into your website and get ready for marketing automation or potentially if you have a small site, if you're only generating maybe 50 leads per month out of your site, you may be able to keep going with just the plugins. But either way, whether you eventually grow to the point where you need marketing automation or whether you stay with these plugins, starting a marketing automation or even just a basic lead gen plugin platform will help you start solving the problems that you're going to need even when you migrate up to the really big guys. Because there are really four elements to any lead generation platform. First is to attract via SEO and social. The other is to capture people via forms and offers. So people think of capturing leads, they only think of like the mechanics of it, we need to have a form, but there's a lot more and we're gonna talk about that. The other is nurturing those leads. So once somebody has signed up for your newsletter or maybe asked to be contacted by sales, you need to keep those people in the pipeline. Very rarely, hands up everybody who the minute you have had a lead contact you via email, the first time you talk to them, within five minutes they started waving a check and saying, I am going to hire you right now. It very rarely happens, which is why you need marketing automation to allow you to nurture those leads once they get into your pipeline so you can keep pinging them once every while, whether it's a month or every few weeks, so they actually turn into a customer. Because a lot of people get quotes from you this is how you turn them into customers. And then finally, the fourth element of any lead gen platform, whether you buy it from a commercial big guy like HubSpot or Marketo, or whether you build it yourself and roll your own with um, plugins the way we're going to learn tonight, is to optimize your lead gen operations. So you need tools that are based out of SEO, but also based out of your landing pages and your forms that optimize and measure and test what's working and what's not. Because no landing page is perfect the first time. Very few are. Very few forms are the ideal for capturing just the right data that you need to make that sale. So you need to in integrate some optimization as well. So we need to figure out when we start doing all of this is where do we start? Because most plugins offer some of the lead gen functionalities. Very few offer them all. And most of those are paid or have a steep learning curve. So the fact that some plugins only give you maybe lead capture or A-B testing or some optimization tools is actually a good thing because when you plunge into lead gen, when you plunge into turning your site into a marketing optimization and lead gen machine, it's better to start with the functionality you absolutely need. So you maybe absolutely need to capture more data on the people who come to your site and want to be contacted by sales so that you pre-qualify them and maybe what you need is a form that is optimal and you need a plug-in that helps you create really robust forms to capture our information on your leads such as what is your buying time frame? Are you the decision maker? And so maybe forms are where you need to start. Or maybe you're capturing the right data on your sales prospects, you're happy with what you know about them before you pick up the phone, but you're not sure that your landing pages are good or your offers are good and you maybe need a pop-up offer form on your um, site. So it's good to start with the thing you need the most from a strategic standpoint because it forces you to focus on where is my lead generation 
weak at the moment and where can I strengthen it on my site. It's also good from a WordPress standpoint to install these plugins one at a time in case you break your site. So you're installing it very pragmatically one at a time so you don't break your site, but let's not forget that there's also a really good strategic reason for doing that because there is a learning curve for each of these plugins as well as helping you evaluate the maturity as we were talking about of your lead gen operations of where it's falling apart. My personal recommendation is that you should start with capture. You certainly need a capture mechanism before you even start to attract. And most people balk at this. They're like, wait a minute, we should have a mechanism to capture leads on our site before we start optimizing it for SEO? Yes, because what if you do an astounding job at SEO the first time out and you've got all of these leads pouring into your site and people are so excited to order your product or, or hire you as a freelancer and your site is so poorly optimized for lead capture that they can't figure out how to contact you. Well, you've just wasted an awful lot of traffic that may never come back to your site. So before you do anything on the attract side, before you do any A-B testing for which page converts more, before you do too much even in your SEO or your social media, make sure that your lead capture is tight. So how do you do that? How do you make sure your lead capture is tight? Well, it all starts with walking away from WordPress, stepping away from the plugin, and doing some strategic thinking, making sure you're collecting the right data. Because all the plugins in the world will not help you if you haven't thought about what you need to know about your customers. And I've seen this happen time and time again, is people have the shiniest, fanciest plugins, but they haven't thought about what they're going to do. You know, when people start filling out those forms. And so they'll either have like an 18 question form asking you what color socks you're wearing and what month you were born in, because we really, really want to target people based on their sock color preferences and their age. Or you've got a form that just asks for name and email because you read somewhere that long forms don't get filled out, and then you're calling absolute deadbeat leads who have no money to spend and just filled out the form because they wanted to kind of get a sense of the market. And you could deprioritize those people if you ask just the right questions. So the first thing you do is you sit down and if you're not the marketing decision maker, if you're the developer or if this is the client you're working with, make sure that you think about what on earth you're collecting. And don't think there's a one size fits all form. Because my two main points here are offer, 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 and context, context, context. You know how they say in real estate it's location, location, location? In forms, it's offer, offer, offer. So I want to know when someone fills out a form on my site, if I have five different offers out, and one of them, I can give you an example of where I used to work in-house. We had a software product that op optimized for in-house collaboration in the enterprise. And some people wanted to buy our product because it was less expensive than the name brand product, which I won't mention because it was, is made by our fine hosts here. Um, some people, it, it's a great product, so was ours. Um, other people liked the fact that it was open source. And our salespeople would be calling into these folks completely blind as to what about the product had attracted them. And they would send them emails saying, I'm so glad you're really interested in our cost-effective solution. And they would get a total disconnect with the lead because the lead was like, no, I, I don't really care how much it costs. I care that it's open source because I believe in open source. So you want to make sure that you code your forms. And you don't necessarily have to have it as a question that's obvious to your user. But you want to make sure that whatever plugin you use, and the ones I'm recommending all do that, tells you the context the lead came in. And then everything else comes down to what you want to ask people. Do you need to know how much money they have to spend? Do you need to know what their buying time frame is? Do you need to know whether they're migrating off of Plone? You figure that out before you go out shopping for a plugin because different plugins capture data in different ways and feed it into you in different ways. So now I know you guys are really dying to see the actual plugins. You're like, please, for goodness sakes, just show us the plugins. So um, this is one of my favorites. It's called Lean Lead In. Not Lean In, but Lead In. <laughs> um, it's got a really nice, clean interface, and it provides a lot of data on individual leads. So we're going to start 
with the ones that are closest to a full CRM marketing automation that you can keep track of your leads, you can place notes in there about what kind of contact you've had with them, you can place them in the context of how they came to your site, and you can get information on them like what pages they visited through LeadIn that they visited prior to filling out the form, which gives you a lot of contextual information for sales. So if someone migrated through my site and visited all of the pages to do with cost, then looked at the technical specs, then looped back through who our team is and then filled out a form, I know that they're thinking, are these people credible, given how cheap the price is? And that's a completely different thinking pattern than if they started on the team, they started on the technology, and then they were less interested in the price. That navigation trajectory is gold for sales because it tells you does this person care about your pedigree, your price, or some other factor based on what they navigated through before they converted. This will tell you that. It uses cookie tracking. Its strength is in the individual lead data, so it gives you these great lead cards that tells you what pages the guy visited, how many times he came back before he converted, what his name is, and it does tell you the color of his socks. I'm kidding about the last one. Convertible is my thought for a, a starter Salesforce. It's got a very similar user interface to Salesforce in that it gives you the pie charts about your conversions and how many conversions you're having this month. So it's a good way to litmus test and do a quick health test of how fast you're generating leads this month. If you're aggressively out there doing marketing and you want to see did I make more leads this month than last month, Convertible gives you that data at a glance. Um, it gives you also very similar data to lead in um, about your leads, but its, its strength is that big picture dashboard. So if you have to really report into a C-suite somewhere, I would use Convertible first. <coughs> now, Jump Lead is, is the Cadillac of WordPress plugins for lead generation. It's, it's awesome. It is also not free once you go beyond like 50 contacts. So if you're a small shop, you can play with it for free for the rest of your born days, or you can put it into like a, a trial, like a Skunk Works site and play with it and learn it there. It, it's reasonable even when you go up in the freemium model. It is awesome. It really is inbound marketing automation for WordPress. It, can, it, it says it can find people's social media IDs, yes and no, but it'll give you the activity streams on people, like what they did on your site, including social activity, so not just pages that they visited. It also integrates with live chat, and then that feeds into your record about that lead, so it's really customer relationship management. Long after these people have become leads, once they're customers, you can keep them in jump lead, and you can keep track of all of the service calls you've had with them and the chats that you've had with them. It's also got a nice little email marketing platform on it. So again, when it comes down to nurture, it's really, really strong. The other two plugins also have a certain amount of nurture, but at some point you have to move leads into your MailChimp or your constant contact. You don't need to do that with Jump Lead. Um, but again, it isn't free and the other two are. So, yes? Could it integrate with MailChimp though? Yes. It can. It can integrate. In fact, all of these have some way of integrating with MailChimp, even if it's just through f the forms. So they're really nice. And they also integrate all of them with Jetpack, which, you know, with your Jetpack forms. So speaking of which, if you just need simple forms, so if you're getting 10 leads a month, like you are a boutique agency, or you're a consulting firm that can really only take on three clients at a time, you maybe don't need that much CRM built on, especially if you already have a CRM that you're already using and you don't want to learn a new one. If you've already got your own CRM and you're comfortable manually moving data around in Excel, I love WP Leads. That's why it was the one that I put into the description. Because if you just want stupid, simple lead gen forms, WP Leads is easy. The one caveat I would um, do is that it tries to be part of a suite with an A-B testing and a landing page plugin. Those two don't work. I, I'll just be blunt. They kind of work, but only if you pay for them on the freemium level. I found that if you try to use the free templates, they tend to break your site. So you can install WP Leads Bear on its own. It's really a good transition point between having just Bear Jetpack um, forms on your site and a full CRM. It's super easy to spin up new forms. It's just, it works with short codes. Um, 
you can put all of that contextual data in and it is going to give you like down here you see the visitor page view information it's going to give you a little bit of that leads trajectory as they moved through the site so you are going to get some context main way you build context though into WP leads is that you put a different form on every page which literally takes you three seconds to put different forms on because you can clone your old forms so then you know okay this person converted on the page that was talking about price versus this person converted on the page that was talking about open source and that's why you get your context yes uh, this has uh, export to Excel the other two where do you it lives in there it, it, the data lives in there. Um, you can export. You can export into this Excel. One does, but the other two, you can. The and the one you can get your data out of it, but you don't need to because it has a so CRM. You play with your data, you know. Oh yeah, you can. You can export it into Excel. But I'm saying here you have to export it into Excel. You have to. If you want to put it into a CRM, this hasn't got a CRM. I understand. I captured some good. Yeah. Yeah. You need that capability to Right. Yes, so do it. You can like, come up with You can. I've, I, as I've said, you can export it into Excel if you want. The thing is with those, any of that cleanup stuff, you can also do it inside the tool but you can also export it to Excel. Here you have to export it to Excel if you want to play with it. <coughs> so, you know, if you really anticipate a tiny number of leads per month, like five, there is really nothing wrong with having Jetpack Forms and a MailChimp email sign-up integration, especially since now in the past month, MailChimp has rolled out certain simple marketing automation there comes a point where it's overkill to do anything other than a simple form, and if it's five people a month raising their hand, you can wait to ramp these tools up gradually. I'm not saying it's ideal, but if you're thinking to yourself, it is a lot for me to learn a CRM right now, there's nothing wrong with sticking with forms and then just putting these people into your own very simple CRM like, in CRM like Insightly if you're just at five leads a month. Um, it's always good to have something there other than that, but if right now you are just at the Jetpack stage, then adding an integration of a, an email plugin like MailChimp that offers you some marketing automation is a good place to start. I put this in there because you start here and you work your way up, and a lot of us are still here. And if you're just having people fill out forms and it's emailing to you, the next step might just be getting email marketing set up versus going the full thing. Yes? Christine, when you talk about 50 or 10 or mm -hmm. 5 to 10, mm -hmm. I tend to think of like a man pack mm -hmm. operation. But there's a gentleman in the SEO group. Yeah. He said, wow, well, we get about 10 leads mm -hmm. a month that we can convert. Yeah. And everyone was trying to get him more leads. <coughs> yeah. He said, no, that's all we can handle. Right. Each one is worth between three and five hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Energy <laughs> Dynamics Company. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, what business is this gentleman in? <laughs> I said this guy, no It's like, can we all get into that business? I tried. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, at that stage, though, they probably have Salesforce because the sales cycle is so long that they need a CRM of some kind. And then there's really nothing wrong with going to WP leads and just taking that data, dumping it out, and putting it into Salesforce because most of your action is going to be in Salesforce. So you can massage it. Yeah. Yeah, and so that your sales team can keep track of all the contacts they've had because that's a hand sell. If it's a $300,000 lead, you don't really, I'm going to go out there and say, if you're a boutique in, you know, boutique industry and you're dealing with $300,000 leads, your salespeople are spending so much time on the phone that marketing automation is a complete waste of your time because marketing automation is for churning a bunch of leads, very few of whom, whom convert, and you have to do volume because this takes a lot of the volume off of, you know, okay, this lead is not good, this lead is good. When you're dealing with that kind of small volume, high value, it's so high touch that you really do need Salesforce. And so little of the conversion happens on your website that you're fine with a form integrated into your Salesforce. Um, so 
Before I move on from these, because I'm going to be talking about some questionable activities next, um, does anyone have any more questions on like the forms and how you feed it into either your CRM or you use one of these that is its own CRM? Okay, so I can dive into the. Oh yes, okay. You want to just use a Google form write a spreadsheet that kind of thing? You could. My feeling is from a branding perspective, if someone comes to my site and they see a Google form and they figure out I've put a Google form on my site, it looks very homemade. I mean, if you're a, non if you're a small nonprofit, that could be fine. I, I mean, it's okay. I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with using a form. Um, I just feel like if you have something integrated with, you know, a, in, through a plugin, it looks a little nicer and you, you have the capability of adding more as you go versus having to transition away from Google Forms. Does that answer your question? No. All right, so now I can talk about the question of activities. This one I actually have to confess to using on my website. Um, Rayco went around and handed you guys a flyer for my conference, Leak Marketing University, if you go to that site. Um, it's my marketing conference that I'm organizing happening October 18th and 19th, and I have one of these popping up, so if you want to see it in the flesh, first of all, shameless plug for my business. Second of all, you can see it in the flesh. The reason I call these questionable activities, though, is that opinions are divided about how okay it is to have pop-ups on your site. I mean, let's face it. Some people would just sooner poke their eye out with a pencil um, than allow pop-ups on their site or see a pop-up. However, what I like about automatic lead generation for WooCommerce, and it's the only one I recommend in some cases, like in mine, and you can see how I've used it to get a sense of the context. It's not just a shameless plug. Please attend my conference October 18th through 19th. Um, <laughs> is that it is coupons that you give out in exchange for social shares which are used a lot in e-commerce and it's fairly normalized. So if someone's been browsing your site for a little while, the automatic lead generation lead generator for WooCommerce, which by the way is a total misnomer, you don't need to have any e-commerce plugins running on your site. I've tried it, there are none on my site, works just fine, it also works with many other um, e-commerce plugins. Someone's been browsing, this will pop up and say, like us on Facebook and we'll give you $10 off. Subscribe to our email, Google Plus us, tweet about us, and we'll give you $10 off. It's not a crime. You know, it, there's contexts in which I have literally fallen for this coupon thing on other people's sites as well. There is a online thrift store called Twice that sells, like, high-end women's clothes for, like, 90% off because it's been worn three times by some millionaire who then sold it, and it's, like, eight bucks for an Armani jacket. And they give you this coupon when you browse your site for 10% off. And it's the little tipping point that makes people who are already, let's face it, thrifty enough to be buying rich people's cast off clothes, um, that an extra incentive. So if your target audience is people who are looking for somebody's secondhand jacket, or, your target, or you're selling a commodity item, or something where price is really sensitive and a really timely offer is a tipping point, go ahead and use it. People actually feel my experience has been more comfortable if you give them a coupon in exchange for a social share than if you just throw a coupon at them. Throwing a coupon at them feels desperate. Bartering a social share for a coupon feels more like relationship building. Yes, it's a bit crass and commercial, but it's less just a desperate coupon waving in people's faces. So I feel comfortable enough to recommend this. It also has really nifty at-a-glance analytics so you can see how many shares you've had. And I've had a fair number of shares, again, for my conference taking place October 18th, Sleek Marketing University. This is horrible and it's a jerk pop-up, but I felt the need to share it in case you have a client who's a jerk and puts a gun to your head and forces you to put a jerk pop-up on the site. Um, this is one of those things that when people start to leave, it says, are you sure you want to leave? You get a free e-course. Please don't ever, ever, ever install this plugin. I'm really, really sorry I ever recommended it. However, there are some contexts where I can see that you would want to put it on if somebody is actively abandoning a buying behavior that they're in the middle of. If I'm filling out a shopping cart or a subscription form and I leave and you push a coupon at me, 
I won't be as offended than if I'm just leaving your site and you push a coupon at me. So if you're doing this as a way to get people to wander away from a conversion page that's halfway filled out, like the person's been on it for long enough that they should have filled it out by now, maybe you can do it then, but in general, stay away. But you, you should know that it's out there if you do have those special cases. What about when you get on Tiffany? Do they have coupons? Probably not. I would bet not. <laughs> yes? I figured you were. When you're talking about exit pop-ups, do you mean the kind that require you to take an action, like OK or cancel? No. No, those are evil. Those right. are pure evil. <laughs> yeah. But even the kind that just pops up within the window yeah. and doesn't require an action, those are evil too? I'm not a big fan of them, except in cases where somebody's wandering away from an action they already committed to make. Like, if I'm just looking at the home page for a site, and I legitimately just, okay, I've read it, I'm done. Um, I've decided I do, in fact, want to register and attend Sleek Marketing University on October 18th. Um, then that's, that's obnoxious, right? But, um, I mean, that's, this is my personal judgment. But if it's a conversion form, like, like let's say somebody is subscribing to your, ma your magazine or they've started to fill out an order form and they've been on it for a long time and then they leave, then kind of pinging them, are you sure you want to leave is fine. It's just like if it's just a neutral page that's just providing information, I feel like popping up a do you want to leave pop up without like having like a social, like an engagement form just to, hey, do you want to leave is, is a little bit spammy. But if they're leaving anyway, what do you stand to lose? They might want to come back. Like sometimes people just are browsing, like if it's a long sales cycle, I've been in situations where you're selling software that's a 90 day sales cycle and people only convert on the third or fourth visit to the site. Um, and if you're popping up on the homepage at them on their first visit, that's a little, it's a little crazy Eddie for my taste. Again, it, it could vary by client, but that's just my personal take on homepage pop-ups as generally a... Can you tell if they bookmark your site? Not with any of these. Not with any of these. I mean, you can with some of the other tools, but that's a different conversation. So, any more questions? Yeah. Yeah, there are some. There, there are, yeah. Any more questions on um, the specific plugins? No. Okay. So, for rolling out automation, you, I really can't emphasize this strongly enough. Start small and build. You know, don't try to put it on every single page. Don't try to put in every single plugin at once. Start small. Even if you roll out like a full CRM marketing automation platform like the first three plugins we talked about, start maybe only putting the forms that feed into it on some of your high, higher profile pages. Or conversely, if you're getting a lot of traffic and a lot of conversion forms filled out, start on a quieter page that gets a little less traffic so that if you start encountering issues, either with the form or on the back end, you haven't committed to it before you've worked all the bugs out. No plugin is 100% fail safe in every scenario, so make sure that you test it. But more importantly, have a plan because it's not about the plugin. At the end of the day, the plugins have gotten so good over the past year, but they're getting better every single day. But the reason most marketing automation pro, um, efforts or lead generation efforts fail is because people haven't figured out what they're gonna do with it once it's up there. So first of all, think about your data management. We've had some really good questions of, can I get my data out of there? How do I get my data out of there? Do I need to get it out just to clean the data or do I only need to dump it out if I decide to move away from another plugin, decide what you're going to do. Who owns that? Is it your office manager? Is it your sales team? Is it your marketing team? Please don't make three different people responsible for it because then the buck gets passed. Going back to the same point of who's responsible, what are the workflows? When a lead comes in, who triages it? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Where does it go? Who goes and logs in every day, goes and looks at the back end of that plugin and decides whether a lead is good and who's going to follow it up? Because 90% of the time when people complain they're not getting any leads, they're getting a ton of leads, it's just that nobody's going in there looking at it and deciding and triaging it. So decide what the workflow is with the leads. And then once you've settled on the workflow, you know who you need to train. So now go out there and make sure that they're trained. 
there's nothing, even the most intuitive plug-in, that you don't need a little training for. And then plan for growth. Maybe today all you need is WP leads. Maybe tomorrow you're going to need a full CRM. Decide what the break point is. Is it 50 leads? Is it 100 leads? Know when you're going to upgrade because if you're getting over 50 leads a month and you really need sophisticated targeting and automation, you need behavioral stuff to start going on, or you need stronger performance, it's time to upgrade. It's time to upgrade from forms to a full CRM and uh, plug-in. And at some point, God willing, if you're doing tremendous amount of, and I hope I haven't offended anybody by saying God willing, but if you're doing a tremendous amount of business, you, may, you are going to one day need HubSpot or Marketo. But with these plugins, you will be so ready for it that you're going to be a whiz at any kind of marketing automation once the day comes. So there, there will be a natural lifespan to this, and one day you may stay at that CRM that's plugged into WordPress, but know what your roadmap is. The worst is to play catch up and have no roadmap and suddenly be overwhelmed by the data that's coming in and not know what, next, what the next plugin is or whether you have to move away from plugins into a freestanding SaaS tool. So once you have a roadmap, it's so much easier to get going. And I think time is being called, so I want to say thank you. Um, my Twitter handle is right up there, so is my email. And again, one more shameless plug for my event, but seriously, in all seriousness, um, our, our wonderful co-sponsors, um, Tom and Rayco and Tech Day Camp, have, have generously donated their free tickets back to the organization. So the first three people to tweet at me can get, attend the conference for free. Um, if you just want to geek out about plugins, feel free to email me. My email is christina at thoughtlight.net. And um, I can probably take a couple more questions right now. Or am I, is it time? OK, I can take two questions. All right, two questions, yes. I, uh, the company I work for, we actually use Marketo. Yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, I guess most of these plugins and stuff would not apply. Yeah. So, but I'm just wondering, do you have any, like, recommendations for maybe WordPress plugins that might be useful on top of Marketo? Um, I would. They would mostly be around optimizing your pages and getting okay. better metrics. Because anything that captures data about leads or processes the leads is going to fight with these plugins and one will break the other. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I would relate to more like ramping up your analytics or your, your A-B testing. Um, one thing that works great with everything and that's great for optimization, I really like, and it's, it's not so much a, a plug-in as a whole other product is Clicktail. Um, it allows you to see how people are mousing over your site and where they click, and it's very, it's not eye tracking. So it's kind of like a, a poor man's substitute for eye tracking, but it's a crude substitute, but good one, of where people are mousing over, and you can see where leads are leaking out. So does that integrate right into WordPress? Or? Um, yeah, and you can also just, you can even hard code it into your site, but it integrates into WordPress. So what is it called? Clicktail. Clicktail, T-A-L-E, and it's really, really useful. And Crazy Egg is like heat mapping, which lets you see how far people scrolled, and you'd be amazed at how soon your site goes cold. You know how the modern best practice is, is that, oh, with continuous scroll, scrolling is fine. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You go beyond three screenfuls, people are gone, baby gone. So Clicktail will prove that if somebody wants like a 17 scroll, oh, with continuous scroll, let's just keep going, this type of site. What's that for? Um, crazy Egg. Crazy Egg. Crazy Egg, yes. And these are freestanding products, so go check them out on their own websites versus going in the plugin, but you can also do a plugin. All right, one more question. Okay, Jim, uh, Ian, okay. What's the, we've all put the wrong dates or put the wrong price and something. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest full pile you've made in the market? Wrong date. Seriously. Giesler, you can tell them the biggest full pile I've made in marketing. I did it today. <laughs> you don't link what you tell people. To the link was broken. I sent out a mass email and it had three links and one of them was broken. So, yeah. It wasn't the big button. It was one of the ones all the way down at the bottom. Exactly. I hope they didn't. 
It was for Sleek Marketing University, taking place October 18th and 19th. But um, I think that's why I say test and test and test, because yeah, it could be as simple as a typo, or it could be something way bigger. I mean, I've seen people literally not follow up on leads. And okay, so that's marketing saying that sales didn't do something. But literally, I've seen people be sent a file of leads and decide that they would get around to it later. So that's more, that's more like, you can't fix that. That's, <coughs> that's not a typo. That's a strategic error to put it. Okay, that's just dumb. Um, but that's why you test and you test and you roll things out carefully because the more you try to do, the more errors, both strategic and simply people getting tired at the end of the day creeps in. So with that, I'd really like to thank you guys. Again, feel free to tweet me any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and I'm also going to post the full list of everything I've recommended as well, in case you didn't catch that.